Okay, today I'm going to talk about something that is very near and dear to me, very important to me, and uh, I think it's important to a lot of folk. Um, but its importance is, uh, should be, I see it as a guarded importance, per se. I think these, there's a little too many mics on me or something. Because we have to understand exactly what's going on. And so this is, it's critical that, um, uh, that, that the folk here understand the science. Because the science is sort of driving what's, what's going on now. I think science rapidly is advancing. And sometimes we don't necessarily uh, keep up with it. We get confused sometimes. Even the scientists get confused sometimes because there's so much data. So it's important that we engage each other. It's just sad that so often I'm the only geneticist talking to folk. I don't understand why, but you know. But anyway, today I'm going to talk about genetic genealogy and, and the uh, ancestries of African Americans because that's what I study. That's why I started doing what I was doing because as an African American, I wanted to understand how DNA could be useful, uh, a useful tool to understand ancestry, my ancestry. Why is this important for African Americans? I think this is important for our, a lot of communities, but African Americans in particular uh, because of the unique experience of Africans in, a, in America. And a recent web-based poll revealed that 80% of African Americans think that it's scientifically important to uh, determine um, uh, African ancestry through DNA testing. Because as you will hear uh, later by some of the um, uh, um, panelists, it is difficult for people of African descent to trace their family history. It's not impossible, but there are some uh, unique barriers that are uh, specific to the African American experience. That experience that I'm talking about is, is the, it's called the Maafa, M-A-A-F-A, or the Middle Passage, the Transatlantic Slave Trade, the brutal kidnapping of tens of millions of West and Central Africans that were captured over a period of time early in the history of this country and whose descendants, who themselves and their descendants helped build the infrastructure of this nation. And during that time, family structures were ripped apart. Communities lost contact with others, people in those communities. Languages were lost, cultures were lost. And so with that, family ties were lost. And so that's why it's, particular, it's of particular interest for African Americans to use this. So let's talk about DNA real quick. What do we know about DNA? DNA is very fascinating. I get very excited about it because I'm a geneticist. We know from the fruits and the labor of the Human Genome Project that there's like 22,000 genes in the genome. There's 3 billion nucleotides, these A, C, T's, and G's, on 23 pairs of chromosomes. And we know that because we've sequenced the human genome. Now, if we compare any two people in this room, your DNA, you'll find that there's a couple of million differences, okay? Subtle differences, and those subtle differences will lead to things like differences in eye color, hair color, skin color, body height, body weight, and also susceptibility to disease. And as a geneticist, I get excited about that because we're trying to find these genes for particular traits, normal traits, and then also for disease. We also recently sequenced the uh, dog genome, or the canine genome, and we found that they have about 19,000 genes the dog. And out of those 19,000, there's about uh, 2.4 of those chemical bases that vary. 2.4 billion. On 39 pairs of chromosomes. <laughs> so the dog genome is important for researchers because obviously dogs get diseases and you want to understand and just, you know, study these genetics of these dog diseases. But we got to understand that there's only about 3,000 genes that separate us from our dogs. And that's why some of us look like our dogs. <laughs> so if you look across inside the nucleus of every cell in our body, except for the red blood cell, there's DNA. And those DNA molecules are organized on these chromosomes. They're called chromosomes. And we found that men have an X and a Y chromosome here, the 23rd pair. Women have two Xs, right? So this little Y chromosome here, this little piece of DNA creates so much havoc in the world, if you think about it. <laughs> you know, and there's genes in particular, important genes on the Y chromosome, like you know, keeping the toilet seat up and not, <laughs> not stopping for directions. All of those are coded by the Y chromosome. 
Let's go back to African Americans for a second. Remember I said that African Americans in particular have this, uh, their ancestry from West and Central Africa. We know a lot about, we, we don't know everything, but we do know a lot about the transatlantic slave trade. Historians and anthropologists and archaeologists have worked on exploring the historical record. And if you think about it, you know, it was a business. There were companies involved in kidnapping and shipping and selling of enslaved Africans. And so they kept records. And so you can examine those records and you'll find that from northern Senegal to southern Angola is where 95% of the enslaved Africans came from, about 5% from East Africa. So we, we know where, geographically, which populations may have been enslaved. But this is just a map showing the different languages of Africa. It's very rich in cultural and linguistic diversity. Thousands of different languages are spoken just in Nigeria and Cameroon alone. This area here, it's a, it's a tropical rainforest here. Thousands of different languages are spoken. There's also a lot of biological diversity. You can go to Africa, in particular West Africa, and see a wide range of skin color, hair color, and the like. So it's important to understand that there's a lot of diversity there. So when we talk about genetic diversity in DNA, and we compare any two people, we find that there are these subtle changes in the DNA. They're called polymorphisms. Poly means many, morph means forms. Many different forms of the DNA. And so that's why I get excited, because we actually look at these profiles, you know, like CSI, you know what I'm saying? And look for those differences, and we look for matches. And so, for instance, in the general population, we can look at a certain segment of DNA, and for instance, maybe 94% of you guys in the room may have a C here at this second to last position. And only 6%, uh, instead of having a C, you may have a T, okay? That's called a SNP, a single nucleotide polymorphism. So as I said, in the room, if we compare any two genomes, there's about a couple of million polymorphisms. Those are those subtle differences. Now, some of those polymorphisms um, uh, don't have any impact, but others do. You know, some actually contribute to disease risk, like cancer and diabetes. So if we look throughout the world, which continents have the most genetic diversity, the most diversity in their DNA, we find that African populations have the most. And that's important to understand because African populations have been around here for the longest. So we can explore the historical record through the DNA and see that Africans as a, as a, commun as a continent have more genetic diversity than European continent or the Asian continent. In fact, half of that diversity that's in Africa is exclusive just to Africans. So if you really want to study genetics or DNA, you should study African people because that's where the action is, huh? <laughs> so why is that? Because the root of humanity, modern humans evolved in Africa, and then they went and spread out through the rest of the world. And when they left Africa, when they migrated out, they carried with them a subset of that genetic variation. And that's why those circles in Europe and Asia are a little smaller, because they represent a subset of the diversity that's in Africa. Now, we can look and trace the migrations of people out of Africa, 100,000 into the Middle East, Europe, Asia, and the like, and then into North America by looking at certain segments of DNA. So real quickly, I'm going to place the genetics of African Americans into context, into a historical context, a social, political, and a psychological context. Because we talk about DNA, it's not straightforward. Because you can be in this room, you can say social, politically, you're an African American. But genetically, you could be a mosaic of different continental groups, okay?